Welcome to the GroupWise ASCOT demo installation. In this installation, we're going to install to a Windows 2008 R2 64 bit server. We've got console one and directory pre installed on a box. We also have the installation media installed on the workstation as well, or on the server as well. So, launch installation, we're going to just go to the computer. We have it on our C drive. We've got it installed to a folder called GroupWise where we expanded the download. And we're going to run our setup.exe. Once that runs, we're just going to close out our Explorer. So we're going to launch the installation in English. Notice the new branding and then coloring. We'll be prompted with the installation wizard. We've got five buttons. The first three buttons are links to documentation. The fourth button says install the GroupWise system, which allows us to install the GroupWise domain, GroupWise post office, and an internet agent. And install more components allows us to install web access, calendar publishing host, GroupWise monitor, and the GroupWise Windows client. So we want to install the GroupWise system. First thing we're presented with is a license agreement. So we're just going to select yes to accept the license agreement. Then the installation type, we're going to do a standard install. Uh, predefined allows us to look at a response file that was created in the previous install or an, in an installation. So we'll do a standard install, select next. We're now presented with a choice of which components to install. Create a new system, update an existing system, or install individual components. If we do create or update, we'll notice that the GroupWise administration and GroupWise agents are pre-selected. GroupWise administration comprises console one if needed, the snap-ins, and the software distribution directory. And GroupWise agents is the MTA and the POA agents only. If you want to do the internet agent, you would select the box for internet agent. If you do install individual components, you now have active all three boxes, and you can pick and choose which components you want to install. We're going to install a create a new system and we're also going to install the internet agent at the same time. So I'm going to select next after choosing making those choices. We're going to install them to a Windows 32-bit platform. Uh, even though it is a 64-bit server, we only have the 32-bit agents available at this time. We're going to install the administration files and the create a software distribution directory. So select next. It will look for console one pre-installed and C colon novel console one 1.2 if I select next. If console one is not installed, it will give us an error prompting us to install console one first. If you need to install console one, it is available by clicking on the install console one button. In our case, it is pre-installed, so we're just going to select next. Now the directory to create the software distribution directory by default is C colon group wise software. We can either keep that or create a different directory. Uh, it will create a directory if you change the path here. Select next, we'll just accept the default. Which components do we want to install that software distribution directory? We want to install all components, so we'll select the all button. So that's going to be the snap-ins, the agents, web access, calendar publishing, internet agent, as well as groupwise monitor and the Windows client. Select next. It's now going to prompt us for information for creating that system. So we're going to go here and give it a system name of DA groupwise for digital airlines groupwise system. Where is an eDirectory server? So we can either log into eDirectory and verify the schema and extend the schema if necessary. So 172.17.6.23 is the location of an eDirectory server. Credentials to log in is admin. And the context is slc.da. And the password is capital N0V3LL123. We'll select next. At this time, it will authenticate and verify the schema. And it will then prompt us with the schema extension. So still logging in. And then we're prompted with the eDirectory schema uh, to be uh, extended at this time. Do we wish to continue? We'll say yes. It will extend the schema and then come back and ask us information for our primary domain and first post office. So with the schema extended, we're now ready to ins answer the questions about our domain name. So we're going to give it a name of SLC DOM. SLC DOM. We're going to path to C colon backslash GRPYs slash SLC DOM to put the files for the primary domain. We're going to click on our select object button here to go in and select the SLC container to place the object. Uh, we're going to accept English as a language and mountain time as our time zone. Select next. Post office information, SLCPO, and again, the location for the file system, C colon backslash GRPYs backslash SLCPO. Again, we'll uh, maintain the context, SLCDA, and again, English and mountain time for your time zone. Select next. 
Now it's asking for the IP address to communicate to the post office agent. So it's 172.17.6.23 again. Standard ports, 1677 for the client, 7101 for the MTA to communicate to the POA, and 7181 for the web administration portal. Now it's asking for the MTA's location, 172.17.6.23, so the same server. And again, the message transfer port inbound to the MTA is port 7100, and the web administration console, HTTP port 7180. Select Next. Location for the agent files. Uh, again, C colon program files, uh, Novell group Y server agents. We're going to install as a Windows service. We're going to select Next for those. We want to use the local system account and we want it to be an automatic startup so that if the server fails. The only thing is if we are going to use them as services, uh, we do not get interactive desktop screens on a Windows 2008 server. If we did not have them as services, we would have access to those interactive screens. Select Next. And now the location for the GUIA files, the GUIA uh, agent server files. Uh, again, program files, Novell Group Y Server GUIA. Again, we want to install them as a Windows services, and we do want to configure it, so we will leave the install the software files, but do not configure a box unselected. Select Next. Location for the GUIA. Again, either DNS name or the IP address and the MTP port. So if we're going to have multiple GUIAs, we can actually uh, invoke fault tolerance and failover by doing so. So port 7200 is what I'll select. Next, do we want to enable the web console? Uh, sure. We'll have a GW agent and we'll use the same password that we used nov 3 ll 123 and the HTTP port is 9850, so it'll require authenticated login for access to the web administration console for the GUIA. We're going to send the outbound mail directly to the internet, not through relay, so we'll leave the choice as selected. Select next. Um, Select the group-wise domain that we want to connect to. Since we're creating this at the same time as we're creating the primary domain, it defaults to that location. The subdirectory is going to be called GUIA in the SLC DOM WP gate directory. And then the object name that will be created in the directory is also going to be called GUIA. So we can just accept the defaults. And then it's asking for our I domain. So our digitalairlines.com uh, is the name of our domain. If you do not have that this time, you can hit uh, enter from console one and enter it at a later time. This will also uh, configure the internet addressing as this as the default I domain for internet addressing. Next, again, we want to install the GUI agent as uh, a service. We said yes to that before. So what account are we going to use to launch it? The local system account, and we want it to be automatic startup in case of a, a power outage or fail over the server. And now we have a chance to review, edit some settings, and then we can click on install. The install will take a few moments, so we'll uh, be back after the file copy is finished. File copy is done, and now it's creating the GroupWise system. All right, so now the creation file copy is terminated. We now are rest the finished screen. We have the option to save settings for future installation. Uh, launch the agents now or launch the internet agent now. We'll just, uh, we won't launch them, but we'll just uh, select finish. Because I'm going to launch console one. The first time we launch console one, it will prompt us to ask for the location of the domain database. Here's the prompt, so we're going to just navigate to our C drive and our GRPY's SLC DOM directory. Select OK, and we'll notice that we now have access to our domains and post offices. Uh, and if we select the domain, we have the opportunity to use the snap-ins and go to gateways, and we see the GUIA is installed as well. At this point, I'm ready to start the services, so I'm going to go into the uh, administration tools, services. And it, uh, we can either scroll for them, but a quick way to get access to them is to select the description column. And since there is no description on these, they come to the top. So there's the MTA. I'm just going to right mouse on it and select Start. It'll take a, a few moments. And we'll start the post office agent. Next.
Next, we'll start the GUIA. And we'll start the groupwise document viewer agent. So the DVA, uh, DVA has been, been decoupled from the web access agent uh, in Ascot. So we'll select start. In fact, there is no web access agent in Ascot. It's been removed. So all the agents are started. I'm going to remove this. Uh, a couple of things we need to do. We still haven't added any users into the system. So what we need to do prior to that, though, is uh, default security on a post office is high, which means the users are required to have a password. So prior to adding our users, we're going to go into group Y system operations under system preferences, and we're going to create a default password. And that default password will be N0V3LL123. So all users being added will get that default password. So we'll select OK on that. Now I'm actually ready to add users. So I'll go to my SLC uh, PO. Um, actually, before we do that, what we might want to do is also go into Tools, Group Y System Operations, Internet Addressing, and verify that, yes, we do have our default domain. What addressing formats? The default addressing format is user ID <laughs> at internetdomain.com. So maybe we'll change that to first name dot last name. Uh, and then what email addresses do we want to publish e directory? We can say publish only the preferred one, which will be first name, last name. Or we can say pub publish all addresses, and all addresses would be all formats. A user ID, last name, first name, first name, last name, first initial, last name as well. We have the option of also publishing nicknames and gateway aliases. Uh, we'll just leave that as published or preferred. And we also see our default outbound GUIA, the SLC DOM GUIA. So we'll select OK. Update a directory uh, internet email address for all users. We'll select yes. And now we're going to add our users into the environment. So we have our SLCPO. We're going to go to our properties of it. And we'll go to our membership. And then we're going to add our users from the users container. We'll select everybody. Select OK. And select OK. And now we have a list of all of our users now installed in our environment. A couple other quick configuration changes, uh, maybe on the post office agent. A couple things we like to do is go in to make sure that our log settings are set to verbose initially. Uh, for also for, uh, for beta testing, this will be uh, helpful. Click apply. Uh, we're going to say no to a couple of the questions about internet or SSL connectivity. We'll say no. Uh, we'll also go in here and look at our agent settings. We'll also go in and set a GW agent as the HTTP username and set a password. So when we installed our GUIA, we had that. So let's be consistent. We'll set the passwords on those. At this point, we do have the option to enable SOAP if we're going to be using group-wise web access or something like the data synchronizer or something like a BlackBerry Enterprise server. That would definitely be uh, needed to be done on all of the servers. We'll just uh, we'll come back and do that at a later time. Um, also on our network addressing, we want to make sure that we got the right IP address. Uh, if I don't want to see those SSL error messages, I can go into my internet client server and disable the SSL portion of it for now. And we'll select OK. And those changes will take effect. And now we'll do identical with the MTA. We'll go in here and look at our uh, agent settings. We'll set our agent name. G-W-A-G-E-N-T, set the password. And we'll also go in here and set the log settings to verbose. And we'll also turn on message logging. Keep all the messages for one day. And we'll apply that. We'll also go take a look at our gateways, at our GUIA. Another thing we want to do here is uh, the GroupWise tab is over on the right-hand side here. We'll just go to our uh, logging. We'll set our logging to verbose as well. And we'll need to go in here and set our gateway administrators. We'll add a gateway administrator. We'll add this account here. And we'll add that user as a postmaster to be compliant. And we'll also go to the identification page. And under the foreign ID, we'll add digitalairlines.com. Not required since we do have a, an internet addressing turned on, but we do receive an error message on the GUIA about not having a foreign names file available. So 
we'll just apply those changes and group wise is running uh, let's do last thing we'll uh, go in and launch Internet Explorer and we'll go to our HTTP 172.17.6.23 at port 7180 and this is a login for our own internet agent and again we supplied GW agent and the password of N0V3LL123 and we're going to add this to our server as a trusted site and we now have our agent. So we see the agent is up and running. We see the post offices and domains and gateways. And uh, let's just change the IP address to 81 and we'll log in as well to this one. And this is our post office. And we see that the post office is up and running. And let's add the last one. We'll add our GUIA 9850. And again, GW agent. And we have our GUIA. So we're able to connect through our web administration to every one of the agents. So our services are up and running. I'll just close the browser, close console one. And this concludes our installation. Thank you.